Hi, I'm Jackie French. The film you're going to see is an introduction to one of Australia's most iconic and fascinating animals, the little Aussie digger that we call the wombat. You're not just going to see the fascinating world of wombats, but the world of wombat carers. Those people who dedicate so much of their lives to looking after injured wombats, caring for orphaned wombats, you're going to see just a little bit of the secret world of wombats themselves. I hope you find it as absolutely compelling and fascinating as I do. like when your eyes have opened you can't close them there's just no way you can turn your back on them I don't want to look after them I would rather they be with your mom but this is such a need for it sadly Not like mum's pouch, is it, eh? I joined the Wombat Protection Society when I came down here. I heard that there were carers who had raised orphan wombats, but they didn't have the right sort of environment to release them. I was a bit uncertain because I know there's some people who feel fairly antagonistic about wombats. I, I don't know that these two little guys will survive, but we won't do anything to sort of try and keep them coming back to us or anything like that. We want them just to go out and live their wombat lives, you know, and really probably have as little to do with humans as possible. Come on, babies. Bottle. Did you want first bottle, Henry? Come on then, how'd you come? Good boy. This is Henry. This is um one of one, two, three, four, five. This is one of ten. These are the three, the three that are in this middle-sized nursery. Come on, come on. Here's your bite. Oh, Henry. <laughs> they used to be called common wombats, but we don't call them common wombats because um, their status is fast becoming uncommon. I think mange and road kills contribute to the decline of wombats more than authorities and more than the public realise. It is happening at a faster and faster rate. It's accelerating the death of these animals because they're not breeding quick enough to replace what's being euthanised on the roads and road kills are becoming more and more and more. How many more are out there that you've got no idea about? This is a large male. So obviously no young. Okay, unidentifiable. This is marking them. This marking here is just to let um, other carers know that they've been marked and checked for young so that when other carers might drive past, um, they know, okay, they've been checked so they can keep moving on, otherwise you'd be stopping all the time. Yeah, can't identify that one. Uh, it's too far to see, too hard to see. This is been here for a little bit. Or I'll just take them off the road more. Yeah. Um, off the road here. Got another male here. Probably about 30 kilos in weight. Sometimes these guys have been hit by cars or they've been shot, so I'm just checking to see. Yeah, they're going. This guy's too far gone. But, uh, anyway. Just 
So somebody cares. We've got a male here again. There's a male. Uh, not very pleasant business. Ugh. To remove the joey if it's live in there, uh, we have to um, we actually put our hand in there with a, and, uh, with a pair of scissors, and we can get in there and, and um, cut that away, cut away at the pouch there, uh, and then pull the joey out. What's he doing? What's he doing, baby girl? Hey? She's a little sweetie. She was just found sitting in the middle of the road all by herself. And she was only 500 grams, so she was only this big. She took fits for the first few days and she got over the fitting. It was just um, one of the things that happens when they're flung out of their mother's pouch after the impact of the car. Um, her leg come in quite badly damaged, so we've just been waiting for that to heal. And it's healing really nicely now. This leg here has been um, the problem. So we do a little bit of physio on her every day. I've had some animals that come into care that should have been dead. The mother was seen early in the morning and wasn't checked again until late that afternoon and it's been 40 degrees outside and the animals come into care and survived quite well. So, you know, you should always stop and check. Always stop and check. We got our first kangaroo joey 23 years ago. One week before our first son was born and it hasn't stopped since. Did have stock, but stock have moved out and we moved them on and this has grown. I think it was all meant to be. It was all meant to be out here. Ah, oh, wombats, they're highly intelligent. They have got so much character. They're funny. <laughs> they're just really special. We prefer to have them, to raise them with others just so they can learn how to behave and learn to pick up what a wombat is supposed to do. It's good to have these little practice burrows and then when these guys move out of there we let them dig like whatever they want in there and then when, when they move out of there we backfill all that and make it ready for the next lot <laughs> so they can start all over again. See how she's worn down her claws just from digging. It's good, healthy. Coming from Sweden, never intended to stay in Australia. There was, it was, I, I fell in love with, of course, my husband and the whole place, everything about Australia. Now we're going. He would have been better off with his mum. That would have been better. Mm -hmm. Would have been much better. Wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Would have been better with your mum. I know.
And Marie, really, I mean, we do this together, but she, we could say a wombat whisperer. I knew straight away she had a problem. This is Heidi and Heidi's got mange. You can see here all the all the um, fur loss. Unfortunately if mange attacked cattle and sheep the way it does wombats there would be a huge amount of money spent on research but because it's a wombat um, there's no money left over for it. Mange can wipe out populations, particularly when they're isolated, and that's exactly what they found now on Maria Island. Mange is sweeping across the top of the island, and it is, it, it's not decimating, it is absolutely wiping out the populations of wombats. A mite lays her eggs in there, um, and, and those tunnels over time start to leak fluid from the wombat. It tries to heal itself up, um, and so they get these um, keratotic plaques, which are, look like great big scabs all over the, um, the wombat. Well, today's lovely because um, we're back in our home ground where the Wombat Protection Society actually began doing a workshop for local farmers and the local wildlife groups, encouraging them to um, come together, work together as um, a community and start to use the treatment flats as a way of treating their wombats that have mange. Unfortunately, I think uh, we in these fairly primitive methods are probably the best hope that, that the wombats have. The, the suffering with mange, it is horrendous. It is the worst nightmare for any species to suffer from mange. They will die if they don't get treated. They get so itchy, they, they scratch themselves, they, um, they bleed, they scratch off their skin, they, they become fly-blown and maggots everywhere, they dehydrate, they starve, kidneys fail, all the organs eventually just shutting down and it can take so long of suffering. It's the worst, absolute worst nightmare. Oh, it's an awful thing you got, isn't it? Yeah, it's an awful thing what you got, isn't it? I know it does take a lot of time, but it's about get out and learn to know where the wombats are, learn to know what they look like, and you can recognise them, and just keep following them. If you don't find them, keep looking. Come on, don't chew the teat. There we go, there we go. Even though she's got mange, um, it, it's not horrendously severe, even though it looks pretty bad, it's not bad at all. Um, and she hasn't lost weight, so she's going to be perfectly fine. And I think we've got rid of the mange. I can, mange has got a smell, a really dead skin smell. It smells revolting. So you can usually smell mange when you, as soon as you see an animal, you can smell it straight away. Oh, it's got mange, you don't have to know any further. They come in and can be pretty bad ways and thank goodness we got Southern Cross Wildlife Care Centre with Dr Howard Ralph who can mend just about anything. The, the wildlife is such an enormous need that we cannot ignore that need. We cannot say no. The, the load is so overwhelming and a lot of the things we do nobody else will do. But the need is so great that we keep doing it and we will keep on doing it and we will never give up. You do give up a lot for these animals, but if somebody said to me, you're not doing another wombat tomorrow, I would break my heart. It would never happen. It would never happen. I will die with a wombat in my arms. There's no risk about that. So.
<laughs> so I suppose there is a motivation. We just love them. This is the gate we had built which is their entrance to the rest of the world and the rest of their life. So one evening when they come, they'll presumably push out of that gate and maybe stay out or maybe just go out for a short time. I mean, hopefully they don't leave one day and we never see them again. But that's the chance you take. You know, what you do is you set them up the best way you can and um, hopefully we'll see them every now and again, but we may not, yeah. To be able to be accepted as being part of here, just being part of all the wildlife that lives around you, to be accepted into that. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. Can you see her? This is one of our wombats that we released many, many years ago and she's now big female and she is established. She has got a system here. She's totally accepted and she's now got a joey. See how much bigger she is compared to the others? She takes no notice of me. She doesn't need us anymore. She doesn't care about us whatsoever. But she also knows we're not going to do anything. She's not running away. It's the best part of it, just to know that they're surviving out here and they're doing well. They have actually been, they have actually established themselves. They have a burrow, they're breeding, they're, she's having a joey. Can't get any better than that. She's seven years old and she came in as a 80 gram. She was this big when she came in, eyes closed, really tiny. 